Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is going to be my review for the um, season premiere of Witch of the Beast and season 2, episode 1, A Movable Beast. And I was really looking forward to this season premiere because Witch of the Beast was one of my favorite shows from last year. It was probably my favorite new show from the fall shows I watched last year. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was an amazing show. Um... And, you know, it got darker and darker as it went on last season, and I really enjoyed that. And this season, I heard it was going to be darker and scarier and sexy. They said sexier as well, because, like, I don't know if they, they said that, but... Um, and basically, this show is a lot better now, I gotta say. I really... I mean, I love the show in season one, but season two is going to be so much better because of the direction they're going in. I'm really enjoying this direction that they're going in. I think it's going to be an amazing season, and I'm really looking forward to this season. So I think it's going to be really, really awesome. So um, let's just get to it, because overall, I really enjoyed this, this, um, this uh, season premiere now. We did have a couple storylines in this episode. There were quite a few things that we need to talk about. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, had to do with uh, Joanna. Definitely the biggest thing had to do with that. So right away, we see this black cat walking through the woods, uh, stalking a shadowy figure, tar um, darting through the trees. And, you know, um, we know that um, Wendy can turn into, you know, anything. She can turn into anything, so we had a feeling it was Wendy. I pretty much thought it was Wendy, just because, you know, she can turn into anything. I wasn't entirely sure, but I was pretty sure that it was Wendy. Um, so, then what ends up happening is, so, you know, we see that happening. And then, meanwhile, Freya is making up a potion and chanting a spell. We don't know what it's for or anything. By the way, it is one week later from where we left off last season. There's no mentions of Asgard because they really can't remember what ended up happening after that. So there's really no mentions of Asgard or anything, which I thought that was kind of interesting. They didn't actually um, mention Asgard. And basically, then in the bedroom, Victor has tied Joanna to a bed. And basically, remember how Penelope almost killed Joanna? Well, she has that poison still in her, and in order to get it out of her... Victor has performed this very weird ritual on her, definitely. Um, he has to, he takes this dagger, slices her wrist with a dagger, and, uh, yeah, that was definitely very graphic. Probably the most graphic scene on Watch of the Beast End so far was that scene. I mean, that was really graphic to see, definitely. And then we find out, yes, the black cat, um, is Wendy, um, and we learn that Victor is carrying out this strange ritual, be and basically, yeah, so... What's happening next is that Aunt Wendy returns home, and so basically, um, we also saw that Ingrid is sleepwalking through the hallway. We don't know why she's sleepwalking, but she is, and Ingrid finds Freya and reveals that she's sleepwalking. She ended up in the yard, and Aunt Wendy returns home and says that she's been stalking the figure that she thinks came through the portal that night. Now, I predicted that that figure was, um was Joanna's son, because if you remember, Joanna abandoned her son, and I was pretty much thinking it could be her son, that's what I was thinking, and, um, you know, we didn't really know who it was or whatever, but we didn't get to find out till later, but I was pretty sure it was her son, but basically, you know, Wendy says that the figure is hungry, dark, and evil, but that he or she is cloaking him or herself in some way, and before they close the portal, they need to discover who they're dealing with. Because they still have the portal open to Asgard. And uh, as I said before, whatever since that portal's open, whatever is in Asgard is going to come out of Asgard. That, you know, basically. So, the potion Frey was working on was a memory potion. And, uh, of course, as I said, they can't remember anything that happened after that portal opened. So... In order for this to work, they have to all drink that potion, trying to remember who or what walked through the portal that night. And the memory potion did work somewhat. They all saw this shadow come through, but they couldn't see a face. So, yeah, that was definitely really big. So, Joanna then gets very um, emotional all of a sudden, because... What ends up happening with Joanna is that she's very distraught that she can't do anything to help. She really wants to help, 
But of course, she is still dying. Even though this ritual is working, she's still dying, and it's it's really sad. Honestly, it it really is sad. So then the family gathers in the garden for some food, and everything is going pretty well, honestly. It seems like, you know, everything's back on track. They're all having fun. Everyone talks about the joys and wonders of magic. Until Joanna makes a toast, falls to the ground, and she ends up having a seizure. Like, that was crazy right there. I did not know what was going on there, but that was probably one of the craziest scenes ever. Um... Basically, you know, the Arg the Argentum is taking her is taking over her life, basically. So that was definitely really big. So in the house, Victor then says that she had a seizure, and Victor tells um, his daughters that um, this is normal for someone who's undergone her situation. And Victor also tells them that Joanna wants them to go about living their lives normally. And when the girls leave the house, Wendy asks Victor why he's lying to them. Because she knows that this is not normal. She knows that something else is going on. And Wendy's just like, well, obviously this is not right. And I mean, no, that does not make any sense what Victor just said. So obviously, he's not telling the truth. And the reason is because Joanna doesn't actually have that much longer to live. She is dying, it seems. She is dying. Even though he was able to... Um, you know, sort of cure her, she's still dying. So, it's really sad that she's still dying, but Victor says that there might be a rare plant in the Amazon that could possibly save her life. And if he leaves now, he can be back within three days. Unfortunately, he's not sure if she has that long, though, so that's a problem. So, then we see, um, you know, then what ends up happening is that, um, basically... Okay, what what ends up happening next is that Joanna and Wendy kind of have this conversation, and Joanna starts to accept her mortality. You know, she's going to accept that she's going to be immortal, and says so she's finally ready to go, and Wendy isn't having it since she won't let her go. And um, Joanna says that she's that's all she's ever wanted for her girls, to have a normal life, and that if she dies, perhaps her curse will die along with her. If you guys remember, her curse is whenever um, Freya or Ingrid die... Um, Joanna has to rebirth them. Uh, she's forced to rebirth them, and they have to start over again. Like, they have to... They have to basically start over again. That's what her curse is, and, you know, because of that, um... She doesn't really want that anymore. She doesn't want to have to keep, you know, rebirthing them all the time. She's tired of it, and she doesn't want it anymore. So... Yeah, she's really tired of rebirthing them, and honestly, I can understand that. I mean, she's like a 40-year-old woman, 40, 50, 40s, 50-year-old woman, and she's kind of tired of it, and she's ready to die. So, however, they then hear a knock on the door, and Wendy goes to answer it. And it turns out it's actually the hooded figure that comes to reveal itself, and I was correct, because Joanna says, Frederick, and I was like, yes, I was right. And it turns out that it is Frederick. I'm pretty sure we all know, knew, because before we saw this figure casting spells, and who else would it be? Like, we know it wasn't Dash, we know it wasn't Killian, we knew what happened to them. I'll get to what happened to them in a second. Um, you know, I'll get to what happened to them in a second. But, we knew it wasn't them, so, you know, who else could it have been? Um, I was pretty sure it was Frederick, and it turns out it was. So, Frederick, Joanna doesn't know what to do at this point, because Wendy asks where he's been all this time, and uh, the portal's been open more than a week, and he says that his memories only just return, because if I, as I said, no one else could remember what happened after that portal opened, including Frederick. Um, so, he's been wandering around in days, and Wendy, however, does not trust him. She doesn't know if she can trust him, and basically she just doesn't know. However, Wendy, you know, Wendy does not trust him because he betrayed all of them once in the past. So, that was definitely very interesting to see. And, uh, but then he does something very interesting because Frederick senses that Joanna is sick and recognizes that she's poisoned with Argentuum. And he says he can help, places his hands on her head, absorbs the poison, and she's instantly better. So, he heals her. So obviously, you know, he says that over the years, he's built an immunity to the poison, as his grandfather had poisoned him countless times, and he says that he must sleep now. So that was definitely very big. So even though, um, Frederick, you know, even though, um, 
you know, Frederick has this recent gift of life. Wendy is still not sure if he can be trusted. And Wendy tells Joanna that they still can't be sure how he's changed or if he's changed over the course of four centuries. And uh, up in the bedroom, Frederick listens on with super hearing, and the mark of the king blazes into existence. So that was definitely very interesting, and uh, yeah, that was definitely really big. So that's pretty much everything that happened in the main plot of this episode. Let's get to the subplot. The subplot was very good in this episode. It had to do with Freya, and I loved Freya's storyline this year with Dash and Killian, and it was even more interesting in this episode because... Freya is very concerned about um, Killian, you know, she's very concerned, because as we know, Killian is the guy that she truly loves, you know, she had to make a choice, Dash or Killian. Dash ended up turning into a psychopath last year, as we know, Dash is basically evil right now, however, Killian is her true love, so she's a, ver she has a vision of Killian, she does not know where he is, and they're in a dark forest with mean moonlight beaming through the trees, and they run towards each other, embrace, and, and passionately kiss. But Freya sees that Killian is bleeding, and that he's lying on the ground dead. And she then returns to the real world. So she's starting to have visions about Killian. So then what ends up happening is that, basically, what ends up, you know, what ends up happening after that is um, we see that there is this man who, you know, that there's this man who, with a scar on his chest... And, um, this man is brought into the hospital, and this is sort of, like, Dash's thing. Dash has to try to figure out what's going on here, and he's bloody and says that something chased him into the woods and marked him with the mark of the king. And that's the same mark that was identified on the, was on the identified man's chest. So, he has to try to figure out what's going on, where this man came from, things like that. So, I thought that was definitely really interesting. And very graphic as well. That's one of the things I love about the show, is that it's getting more graphic and more bloodier and more like a horror show. So then we see that the man who came into the emergency room is actually dying, but before he flatlines, he reveals an ominous prophecy, and he says many more will die before the right one is found. Dash begins um, comprehensions, and as he does so, he sparks a bit of life back into the person, and he's very surprised by his display of magic, and he's conflicted by what he's suddenly become, and he backs away, and the man flatlines again. So yeah, that was definitely very interesting. So... Wendy then shows up with the tarot deck in an effort to help Freya locate Killian, and they conclude that he is still alive. She knows that he is still alive, and, you know, he has to be still alive, but that he might be in danger. He might be in danger, and Ingrid, alongside her assistant, um, they cast a fake spell to help her get the job. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, you know, Ingrid ha had a job and everything. But, um, basically what ends up happening is that, um, you know, what ends up happening is that one of the EMTs just so happens to be the man who wanted Aunt Wendy's herb, bo herb book in the library. They, um, and basically, not long after that situation, Dash actually walks into the bar, and here's where the episode got awesome. Ingrid, Wendy, and Freya all agree. His aura has never looked darker. We can tell that there's something off about Dash. He does not look right. Dash sits down with his hospital friends, and he receives a call from the doctor at the hospital who has reviewed the MRI scans that Dash took of himself in an earlier time. Though he disguised the fact that the scans are actually of his brain, the doctor reveals that there was only one other recorded case of a similar brain scan, and it belonged to someone who fell off a jungle gym. And who was that? Ingrid. Ingrid visited the hospital when she was just 10 years old, and uh, that is huge. Because there's more to them that meets the eye. So, there's something you're going to see. I'm pretty sure he's going to investigate more about Ingrid. You can definitely tell. So, you know, Wendy, um, I mean, um, Freya's very confused. She really wants to see what's going on with Dash. Because she thinks, you know, wherever Dash is, he might know where Killian is. So, Freya goes up to Dash and asks where Killian might be. And she says he might be in danger. And Dash is not happy about this and says she has some nerve asking about the man who broke up their marriage and their love. And he says, you don't want to mess with me. I swear you will regret it. And we can see right away that Dash is definitely going to be the big villain this season. Definitely. And um, he then unintentionally hurls a bar table across the room with magic. And Freya looks on in surprise. She knows Dash has changed and has acquired some form of power. Now, basically, what uh, Wendy said, you know, 
basically was, you know, Freya was trying to figure out why this was happening, because Freya told um, Wendy that Dash has powers, and she says, well, you know, since Penelope died, all of Penelope's powers went into Dash, because that power has to go somewhere, so that power went into Dash, and that's suddenly very big. And then Dash actually receives an email or more like a blackmail, and it says, I saw you. And it's with a video of him attacking Killian with magic on the docks, you know, like in the last episode of the last season. And it then says, I'll be in touch. So who the hell was that? I don't know. Well, that's something to be interesting to see where it is, what, what's going on there, though. And then we finally get to see where Killian is. He is in Santo Domingo, and he's actually won a lot of money by gambling. And uh, we see a young woman by the name of Ava come into his, room, into his room, and he's overjoyed, and you can see that they are very in love, and he says that it's almost like he can read people's minds. He thanks her for healing him, and she wonders when he'll return home, and he says, there's nothing for me there. Um, and he lifts up the back of her shirt, and we see a tattoo of an owl. The owl showed up when Wendy and Freya, and basically, if you guys remember, the owl showed up when Wendy and Freya were dealing with the tarot cards. So Wendy said that the owl was a spirit animal and could either be perceived as his savior or his destruction. And the owl can also be viewed as a deadly predator. So, obviously, that thing that's on killing is not good. It seems like his memory has kind of been erased as well, because he never mentioned Freya or anything, and I really don't know what's going to happen there. We'll have to see, but that was definitely a really great twist. I love Freya's plot. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it's going to go. Um, let's go to Ingrid, because Ingrid did have a lot of stuff to do. Um, Ingrid is sleepwalking. We don't know why she's sleepwalking, but she's sleepwalking. Um, Ingrid even told Freya that she was sleepwalking, and basically, you know, what ended up happening was, um, you know, we, we don't know why she's sleepwalking, but she is going to be interviewed for a position at the university, and she doesn't have a PhD, but she wheels her cart of books through the library, and we hear growling, and it seems as if she's being stalked. We don't know what this creature is or what it wants with her, but she's being stalked, and that's all we know, really, that she's being stalked. Um, and basically, then... Ingrid um, is applying for this job, you know, she really wants to get this job and everything, and she actually casts a fake spell to help her get the job, one of the funnier moments of the episode, even, because the episode was not really that funny, you know, you know a lot of scenes, a lot of comedy, this season really does not have that, um, the spell actually does end up working, and she gets a call from the dean right away, and she did get the job, so everything is good there for her. She dances on the bar stool. She's kind of drunk as this is going on, and that's the same scene where Dash walked into the bar. So yeah, that was definitely um, very interesting. And then the very end of the episode, I don't know what's going on here, but for whatever reason, Ingrid um, sleepswalks through the woods, and a strange creature creeps out of the shadows, and it begins feeding on Ingrid. And she's like, do you want to feed on me? That's literally how she says it. And it's with snake-like appendages, the protude, um, it, with snake-like appendages, the protude from his body, the encounter is very sexual, so I don't know what is going on here, but clearly there's something else going on. I don't know why Ingrid is sleepwalking, we have no idea why, I just, I don't know why Ingrid is sleepwalking, no one has said anything, and it's gonna be interesting to see why Ingrid is sleepwalking, but yeah, that was definitely very interesting, and the only other thing to talk about is Wendy, um, really quickly with Wendy, um, Wendy, when she was trying to get the potion to help, uh, Joanna, or whatever, Wendy did end up meeting with this guy, um, you know, Wendy did end up meeting with this guy in the library, they kind of flirted, and possibly they might start a relationship, so there's not too much going on with Wendy in this episode, most of it was her trying to help Joanna, but she did end up meeting this guy, so we'll have to see where that goes. But this premiere was amazing, I, it was everything I wanted from season two, and here's the thing that I love about season two. It's darker, it's more interesting, it's definitely better. Now, there are a couple things we do need to talk about. One, what the hell is going on with Dash? Now, here's what I'm thinking is going on. Dash could be possessed by the spirit of Penelope. That could be possible. Now, who could have sent him that email? I really don't know. There are a couple options. I really don't know who sent him that email. We're going to have to see who sent him that email, but that's something going to be interesting to see. The other thing is, was Killian's memory wiped from the time that Freya disliked him to the time that Freya told him that she loves him? Was it wiped? We really don't know. Um, you know, Killian was planning on running away with Freya, 
and, you know, Frey kind of turned him down before, so I can understand why Killian is so upset, but, you know, that's, that's definitely a pretty big thing there, so we're going to see what happens there. Also, can they tr can Joanna trust her son still? Here's my thing. I'm thinking she kind of can, but she kind of can't, because if he did something bad to them in the past, then maybe they can't, but at the same time, I'm thinking that they sort of can. I really don't know. We're going to see what happens here with her son. It's going to be interesting to definitely see what happens. Um, I think it was very interesting that he could just heal her like that. That's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens there. And I also like that Joanne and Victor, you know, they are getting closer. I like that, definitely. Um, are we going to see Asgard? I heard we are going to see Asgard. I kind of have this feeling that they're going to do what they did last season. Remember last season, we flashed back to the past where we got to meet, you know, Ingrid and Freya in the past. I feel like they're going to do that with Frederick. And I'm looking forward to seeing if they do that because I'd, I'd enjoy to definitely see that. If they do th do that with Frederick, I definitely want to see that. Now, why is Ingrid sleepwalking? I don't know. I don't know why Ingrid is sleepwalking. I don't know if she did it to herself or if something weird is going on with her. I really don't know. But all we know is that Ingrid is the key. We know that. Um, we also know that guy. I forgot his name. But, you know, that guy in the library. He's now trying to flirt with her so they might start something. But who is that creature? Why was she so, like, sexual to that creature? I really don't know. We'll have to see what's going on there. And Wendy, uh, well, what's going to happen with Wendy um, and that guy? I really don't know. We'll have to see. But, um, yeah, this was a fantastic premiere. I absolutely loved it. I love the darker tone the show is going. I love the uh, more horror tone the show is going in. I mean, there were some actually scary scenes in this episode. Like, that scene where they were in the hospital, that was creepy. Um, you know, the scene at the end was extremely creepy. I have no idea what's going on there. But let me know what you guys saw this episode. That's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for The Leftovers. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.